And listen, at the end of the day, where there's um, living in the industry and having essentially both aspects of it, the science and the background and the degree side of it, the industry side of things, um, first of all, you know, it's frustrating at times to, to put it lightly, because there are still things happening in the industry from moon phase and effect on the rut. We've disproved oh. that now, Bronson. Can we yeah. can we say conclusively that there literally is no effect of the moon on the white tail rut? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> let's, let's lay it out. Jeremy, let's throw those grenades. You, you haven't seen the latest recent. No. Uh, <laughs> yes, I I feel completely confident in saying wh whether our research has been in deer pens or whether we've done it in the field and it's been replicated in almost every state in the white tail range. The timing of the rut is not influenced by the moon. It is. It is. I think photo period. A lot of people have accepted that. <laughs> it's at game this over. Point. I, I, think, I don't know, man. I, I think. Mean, I think, think a lot of the them, red moon and the the guides that have been well, out there. Is flat that, Earth. Is I that mean, tied to are. the rut though, or is that just more tied to movement in general? Well, feeding patterns. Both. And I think we've looked at a lot of the feeding aspects of it too. Can we lay that to rest, Bronson? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you would have to go to our. Uh, Facebook page, but it was during deer season. I analyzed some data and I put two charts up and it got a tremendous amount of feedback. And we ended up with two camps, two camps of people like we generally do that I should probably say three camps there. There were some that said, yeah, I, I understand that. There were some that, that were like, I've always heard this. You have provided evidence here. Contrary to what I've always heard. Now I believe the data. Then you had the other group of people that said, I don't believe it. I know what I saw. Mm -hmm. Essentially, I know what I believe mm -hmm. and I'm sticking to it. A at that point, you Guess know, which one I'd uh, be in. <laughs> I, I'm not here me. to try yeah. to twist your arm. I'm just here to, here's the evidence. Yeah, but we process provided, it for yourself. What is what is the evidence? Just uh, in short term, yeah. What we'll what put a link. Can we put a link to the description to yeah. that Facebook post too? For sure. But just it, kind it, of give us a ballpark summary, you, I guess. You bet. Uh, what what I thought was it, it should graphically. There were very very little work, maybe a little write up, but the the graph should tell you everything. And it was basically over time, over four months, we had daily movement rates. These are from GPS collared bucks, fifty bucks. We had movement rate and watching how there's some day to day, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit more, but it's moving along, moving along. And then it shoots up peak of the rut, the rut goes back down post rut and it's over. And is that based primarily on like distance traveled? Yes. Okay. Yes. T total distance traveled during the day. Mm -hmm. So that, that was, num that was graph. Which is what one. we now, care about as hunters, right? A movement is that, during the day. Is that, see moving. That's a is the daylight, deer moving. That's daylight. Yeah. Okay, let me. That'll be chart number two. I'll okay. tell you that in just a sec. Okay. So we, we had uh, for 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 that one. I believe it was daytime movement and nighttime movement, and those two lines. And then integrated in that uh, chart was here's the moon phase oscillating, full moon, new moon, full moon, and you can follow the curve of the moon phase going in and out. There's not one smidgen of correlation with these movement rates that are related to the dang moon. Then we went, so then everybody- We then just pissed jumped. a lot of people off. <laughs> I'm just curious too, over what, what's the, what's the time frame of time of year? It was the, it was the entire Mississippi hunting season from October okay. until wow. the end of January. That's so lot, it encompassed the pre-rut, rut, post-rut, post every bit of it. Nothing. And then we started getting feedback and it was like, yeah, but uh, what about the time of day? You didn't do this. Yeah, but they're going to be moving more midday, blah, 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 blah. So the next graph was me partitioning, you know, early morning, midday, late afternoon, nighttime. That same deal doesn't change. I love Does that. Does not change. It, it's crystal clear <laughs> that huh. there is no relationship with that whatsoever. Interesting. Lunar lunatics. I believe that was the title of one of your papers. Have Jeremy? you, yeah. uh, or has anybody experienced like, cause I, it's been my assumption or like my perception anyways, that, um, like if I'm hunting and there's a full moon, it's just been my 
experience or it seems like I don't see deer on days that, you know, we're going to have a full moon. I don't and pay it, attention. Se- to it seems like it seems well, I pay attention it, to the weather. Neither do I from like, oh, I'm going to hunt this day or not. But I noticed that there's a full moon. Is it a full or is it a waning crescent? Is uh, it, a, it, it doesn't seem like it matters. It just means moon? like the matter of the amount of light that is. Yeah, but then cloud cover comes in. Trees. In some cases. Sure. Yeah. No. So, Jared. Yeah. Not the. Lay it out to him, Bronson. Lay it out to him. Not to pick on you. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Yeah, okay. I don't mind being picked on. I know. (laughs) Does it matter to a deer's belly? Does it matter to you, your level of hunger, Mm -mm. if the moon is full or new? No. Yeah. Doesn't either to a deer. Well, yeah, but that's the difference between daytime and nighttime movement, right? Uh. Maybe so. We're just not seeing it to, to any. I ne- keep in mind, I'm a hunter. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, I'm a hunter. If I were to see anything in those data that would say, I'm going to change my hunting behavior based on <laughs> yeah. that. Number one, I would do it. Number two, I'd tell everybody about it. Yep. But, you know, for the most part. Hunt the full moon. Uh, I mean, the only thing <laughs> that I ever, I ever thought about from a moon perspective, no relation to the rut, but just from a, a movement perspective was if there was a full moon, thus brighter at night, that maybe the deer could see better, thus move and feed more. But we're saying that there was no indication of that. And again, cloud cover and things like that come into play, but that there doesn't seem like there's any orientation to that. Not, not, not seeing it with our data. Now, Jeremy, you do the, in fact, Penn State yeah, did, did do it. a, a, a did study. Andy did. The, they didn't find Nothing. anything either. I know. That's why. And no. I, I mean, I've wrote several articles for deer and deer hunting, which is probably the the reason there are some people that still like to crucify me out there. But it, it was literally not making my own opinion, but taking the data that exists from you guys from Penn State, two different parts of the country, two different completely whitetail seasons that we're looking there's nothing. Well, there's I, no support. I think the question, if if not the moon, then what is it? And, and Their stomach? Well, so like a, a situation that I think is obscure r- r- aside would be there are certain days where you'll just be driving the loop or whatever and mm-hmm. and you'll see deer everywhere. 30, 50 deer at like 3 in the afternoon and it's like, why? Why? You know, yeah. and there are some obvious ones like extreme, you know, weather events or. Well, and we've looked at that, right? Uh-huh. I mean, again, from a GPS, and you got to think we're taking what readings every eight minutes on those GPS or less than that. 15. Every, Every 15, 15 minutes. minutes, we're taking a reading on that GPS call it or say, is that deer moving or not moving type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Or where its location is. And and so I know um, Dr. Stephen Webb and An- Dr. Andy Little now did a lot of research in Oklahoma around weather conditions. And I believe when I was talking to Andy and Stephen about it, humidity maybe was the only weather factor that they saw was consistent. That doesn't mean that there's ebbs and flows with fronts that don't happen. Yeah. But from a consistent weather factor basis, temperature, precipitation, et cetera. Humidity was the only one that was significant. Is that right, Bronson? And there was one extreme when we looked at wind speed. Yes. But I mean, it, it, I mean, it was like on days that were consistently 30 mile an hour gusts, there was a little bit more deer movement. But Jared, one thing, like when you look at those lines, when I look at, when I look at uh, what we call it as biologists is effect size. What, what is the magnitude of the effect of you doing a treatment or doing something? Mm-hmm. And so I can run the stats on some of that and come up with something and say, it is statistically different. It is statistically important that on a full moon, for example, you know, deer are moving more or less. But then when you look at the effect size and apply the management side of it, you go, yep, sure enough. Deer over the course of the day are moving 50 more yards than they were otherwise. Is that going to drive you to get out of bed? Because over the course of a day, a deer moved 50 more yards than it did the previous. It, it's not me. Yeah. It, if, if they doubled their movement, yeah, it's got to be substantial enough the, to justify an action for sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. So with Steven's stuff, and, and Jeremy, I think you're right. His study may have been eight minutes. Yeah, it, I think at that, that time we were taking eight-minute well, readings. In this third this camp college. of people that are like, well, I've seen a dad. I just I know what I've seen. What are they saying that they believe despite your findings? Um, I think, well, 
I think what's going on there, not to explain all of that, but what can be going on, if, if you believe something so readily, it is now law in your brain. Well, that's what I'm asking, though, is what are they believing? Is it just what I'm saying, too, is like when there's a full moon, they move less during daylight hours? Is that the common belief? T typically, yeah. yeah. The, the, the other is the position of the moon. So you take it one step further and gravitational pull. When is the moon overhead during the day? Overhead when it's or at underfoot. Foot, there's all yeah. that sort of stuff too. And I haven't gotten into that that level of looking at the data. But it doesn't seem like there's any reason to right now. Yeah, why would you? I, well, that that's my and and I am uh, mature enough uh, to to if I find something, I am happy to say I'm wrong. Yeah. Because if because if I can figure out a pattern, a like, reliable yeah, pattern, are I'm <laughs> going to use it and I'm going to share it. Yeah. But but Jared, you also end up with you start excluding the opportunity to see otherwise. If you restrict your, I'm only going to hunt the rut on this particular day relative to the moon. Uh -huh. You only go on those days and you see some deer, you keep confirming For that sure. thought. Yeah. Confirmation bias. Yeah. yeah. Take me. Oh.